delighted to be here again on for the Verdits leadership series of which oh, we've got people joining us which is lovely um and the Verdis leadership series now has been going on for uh two years would you say two years and um i've i thoroughly enjoy them and i think most of the participants thoroughly enjoy them and our objective here is to pick off topics which are very current very um interesting and that we're all experiencing in some subtle way in, on a daily basis and um our objective always is to 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 engage and to to get good conversation and um today is going to be a great example of that um uh, and the verdis team are kind enough to put this on and normally i say welcome to natalie but i can't see natalie so i'll do it for everyone and say welcome to everyone and today we're gonna concentrate our discussion on something which i find um in intriguing i would say which is the word bullying at work and bullying um and uh we're lucky to have elam who can uh, can present herself in a second but i think contextually um i think bullying is a it is not a new word but it's a word that is um becoming more in the lexicon for all of us in the workplace as we are becoming much more aware of what goes on in the workplace really and, and i think i'm i'm very fascinated to hear today um about bullying and i'm going to pass it on to elam maybe to say welcome or, or to introduce yourself and say potentially where you are what you do and how did you get into the subject area i think we'd all be very interested to know how you got into it so welcome elam Thanks a lot, Tom, Tony. Thanks, thanks a lot. And thank you um, all here um, to be here. And, um, you know, thanks, Maggie. And thanks, Salman, for introducing me to Maggie to make the connection that I can be here today um, to talk about what workplace bullying is, what the consequences for the individual as an employee, but also the consequences for the company. Uh, because this is really a topic that not everyone likes to talk about. It's still a taboo topic. Um, but I mean, if we have um, used to live with cyberbullying, bullying at school, then I ask myself always, why should we not talk about bullying at work? Uh, and I suffered uh, twice in my career um, through bullying at work, uh, and I'll share a little bit more about it. But before, um, okay, who is Alem? Alem? Is, I'm originally Kurdish from Turkey. Uh, I used to live in Switzerland for the last 32 years. My name, Elem, is a political name. It means action demonstration. And my father gave this, to, this name to me because he wanted me to become a very strong woman who fights for her rights, but also for, fights for the rights of other uh, human beings. So um, I had some troubles with my names in Turkey, but that's another story. Um, but my name identifies my personality because I'm always in action. I really fight for my rights, but also for the other women's and human beings' fights, uh, rights. So Demir means um, iron. So I'm very resilient because I have a very strong personality. And Sen Turk means happy Turk. So it's the last name of my husband. And it means, it means happy Turk, smiling. So I smile a lot. I always look at the sunny side of the things. Even if the situation is the worst you can have, I will always think, okay, what can I learn out of it? And how can I use it to continue my journey in this life? And so... Yeah, so why workplace bullying? Because as I mentioned, I have been bullied uh, twice in my career. I used to work 22 years in the pharma industry in Switzerland for different companies, also for V4 Pharma. Um, and um, I've, the first time I experienced bullying was for three years. And the second time for one year. And during the first uh, time, it took me one whole year to understand what's happening. It was, um, I was bullied twice by my male managers. And the first time it took me about one year to understand what is going on here. There is something wrong, but I don't know what it is. I couldn't give it a name. 
the second year when I found out what it was, I was like always, okay, let's have a coffee with my manager, let's have lunch. So why do you do that? Why do you say that? I really want to understand your perspective. Hmm, okay, let's find a common ground. Let's look at it from your side. Let's look at it from my side. But it was always like, hmm, no, this is your perception. This is how you perceive things. There's nothing wrong that I'm doing. It's always you. I was like, okay. And this third year was like, okay, let's reach out to people who can help me. It can be, be within the company. It can be HR, whatever. But then at the end of the third year, I got sick. I got seriously sick because I had developed anxiety. We will look at it. I had developed stress. I had developed, I was moving into burnout and I got sick. And when I called the HR to really ask for advice, what to do, they said, go and get fixed. I was like, what? Go and get fixed? I was like, yeah, go and get fixed. You're, you cannot work. Go get some, to some therapies and get fixed. I was like, am I a coffee machine or, you know, a fridge that I'm broken and I need to get fixed? I'm a human being. So, but I thought, okay, Logan, go and get fixed, right? I got a treatment. I got to a psychological treatment after six months. I was like, wow, now I'm refreshed. I got fixed. So start a new company, new position, new manager, but the situation was the same. And um, I could stand it for one year. And then when I did go to HR to ask for some advice, the lady who studied psychology, she was a mother. She was a very powerful woman. She said, Elam, you know, you're a very strong woman, but you have to learn how to obey a man. Say that again, was, how you have to... Obey a man. Whoa. I was like, okay, you're saying that to me as a woman as a HR lead and someone what, who has studied year, psychology. What year was this, Elon? What, what that was back in 2013. So not, no time away. Just yeah, no, no. Yesterday. Yeah. And that was at, at a company where we know, all know. Uh, so, and I said, look, you know, um, okay, there must be something wrong that this is happening to me the second time. It's a, it was a different company, different manager, different uh, environment but this situation is the same. So there must be really something wrong with me that this is happening to me. So let's study psychology to find out what is wrong with me. <laughs> so I studied psychology and I did write my master thesis about workplace bullying. What, is, what are the dynamics? Why is it happening? And how I can prevent it, but how other companies can prevent it. So this is actually the content of today's um, slides. And you've yes. got a few slides to put up. So should we bring, yes. should we bring Let me up? share them with you. And I think, yes. Um, so for the questions, uh, Tony, should we keep them until the end or should we, should it be I, I, like a... I think we'll play it organically. Yeah. So um, if I if I start prompting but then I let, let's see how we go and then we'll maybe um take the slides off and then start because I think if if I don't know how many have joined us Maggie but if it's a small group maybe we'll keep all together today is that okay. sensible yeah. yeah yeah good well let, let's go through this so first okay. fantastic definition it, uh, is that did I hear something <laughs> or am I going mad no right so what no. is what, Oh, hi, hi. Natalie, Natalie has joined us. Oh, hi, Natalie. Lovely to see you. We're, we're, we're cracking on and we'll, we'll bring Natalie in as, we're, uh, as we develop. Yes. So, yeah. So, welcome. Thank you, Natalie. Lovely to see you. So, let's carry on, Ilem. Okay. So, first, we start with the definition because this is a question that I am hearing a lot from people going through workplace bullying and people who don't know what is workplace bullying because they say, oh, is it really a workplace bullying? Is it not discrimination or is it not sexual harassment or is it not a misbehavior or an aggressive behavior? There is a very clear definition from the American Psychological Association. It says it's a ver workplace bullying is a verbal and a non-verbal violence Inclusive aggressive tactics that is happening at least once a week 
over a period of at least six months. So there is a definition also from a time point. So it's, it's not like if it happens once a month or every three months, it's not an, it's something that we would call workplace bullying or bullying. It is a systematic approach. And this systematic approach comes with an intention. We will talk about it also, but according to the American Psychological Association and also according to the workplace research, actually there's a lot of occupational research that has been conducted about workplace bullying. And they say it is a systematic approach with a purpose goal. The goal is to really make the person or feel the make the person feel so miserable that in the end person leaves the company or so the environment this, so you in this definition it's a conscious yes a conscious strategy on behalf of the bully exactly uh and you know uh, there is, I mean, the, of course we can hear, oh, you know, this behavior, oh, and, and with me as well, when I faced, when I started talking with my managers, you know, this is a behavior that is hurting me that I don't really um, want to tolerate because it's upsetting me or why I want to understand why you are doing that. You know, the explanation was always, this is your own perception. This is the meaning you give to it, but behind the curtains, behind you know the in reality what is happening is that they are doing it consciously it's a conscious decision to harm the person so and how does it start basically you know um the un i mean according to un um and its uh, declaration of human rights workplace bullying is a violation of human rights and personal integrity and the personal integrity is a part of the labor law. And we will look at the labor law also Switzerland later on. But in every country, the labor law is really dictating the companies to protect the personal integrity and the human rights of their employees. And if there is a harm of the human rights and personal in integrity, then the problem starts, right? From an employee perspective, it starts, with, it starts with stress. People feel stressed. I felt stressed because there was like, you know, you didn't know what to do, what to expect. There is something ongoing, but you don't know what it is. So it's really stressing you. And, you know, we know when our body is under stress, it can react differently. You know, they can develop behaviors or communication that you don't necessarily are happy with. And then you move, the next level is you move into anxiety. With me, it happened like every time my manager was calling me into his office, I was like, oh, what did I do wrong again? And then he was like, oh, you know, by the way, this email you wanted to send out is missing a comma. Oh, by the way, the, the, the work that I had delegated to yesterday, I delegated it to someone else. You don't have to take care of it any longer. So every time you know you don't know what's going on you don't know what to expect so there is a type of anxiety and that again you know can be really toxic for your body your muscles because you you know the stress combined with anxiety can really move you into an a state emotional state that you know where you feel uncomfortable and unhappy and that later on impacts your mental and physical health because, you know, you worry, you start to worry, your, the quality of work decreases, the interaction with people goes into a different dynamic. And then in the end, you, you move into, you, you can, I mean, I, I was close to burnout. And then um, I said, look, go and get a therapy. I moved uh, into it, uh, you know, so, like a sick leave, started with one month, one month, and then six months. I was on a sick leave for six months. And that comes with a cost as well for the company. And then, you know, you either go back or you extend the sick leave. Uh, and then it has also happened. I have also heard and also I know people who committed suicide because of the workplace bullying. But this is again a topic that not the companies 
really like talking about it. And I am in um, daily contact with burnout experts and they tell me that a lot of people who are suffering bur from burnout, who are being labeled burned out, have experienced workplace bullying. Mm -hmm. But workplace bullying is a sensitive topic that not, not, no one wants to touch. Um, it's easier to label it as burnout and it, it has also uh, found its space in the society. Also from a health insurance coverage point of view, it's easier to label this as burnout and get the, um, the uh, support, financial support from the insurance rather than naming it as a workplace bullying consequence. I mean, I suppose the question that um, is always in front of you is how do you prove um, um, intent so because if, if we've defined it as a conscious act that for example i'm consciously deciding to bully someone the question is is how do you prove that i had that intent mm -hmm. um actually yes this is a good very good question of course the bully will never tell that this was the intention mm. but for example um I had a situation uh, with a, a female manager and um, she was, uh, I mean, she, I, I, I was very, I was protecting myself. I learned how to protect her so, so, so I couldn't, I wouldn't, I mean, I didn't move into victimization. She was targeting me on a constant way. So she, for example, she um, was planning to cancel my two days working from home. And when I openly addressed it to her and said, why do you want to do that? And she said, you know, I never had the opportunity. Why should I give you the opportunity? And I was like, oh, thank you that you share that with me. And I feel sorry that you didn't have that opportunity. But, you know, I mean, if you want to have happy female uh, or male employees, you should better give them the opportunity and they will be very thankful for it. So you see... I mean, it, there is an intention in the background that this type of people don't want you to do certain things, right? For example, this one manager who bullied me for three years, um, after seven years, I met him at, at a DIA Congress in Austria, and I did go to him and I hugged him. I said, oh, thank you so much for having bullied me like years back. And I was like, what are you saying? What are you doing? I said, you know, thanks to you, I did study psychology. But now, since we are not working in the same company, I would like really you to be honest with me and tell me why you did that. And he said, Elam, you know what? I was afraid that you're going to take my seat which is a very interesting thing fantastic let's move yeah. on let's move on to the next slide so when we look at the type of bullying at work there are different type of will bullying that has been identified by occupational research so the first one is work related bullying the second one is intimidating bullying and the third one is person related bullying so the first one and the second one is mainly happening by the managers, so by the superiors. And the third one is rather happening by the peers, by the colleagues at the same level. So the one, the, for example, the work-related bu bullying um, can, can be, for example, that um, your manager assigns you an, a task and then the very next day he or she takes it away, gives you something else. And then a week later, they take this responsibility away from you and then replace it with something new. So you don't know where you are, you know, your, your actually qualifications are under questions. Like they're testing your qualifications, your adaptability skills, um, whether you would raise your voice or whether you just go with the flow. Um, or, for example, you're, you should, you're working on a project and for that project, you need certain type of information that is with your manager or with that person that is bullying you. 
and this person is withholding this information, is not sharing. So your, your project is negatively impacted because that information is really kept with one person. So, so where, sitting... where, where does bullying and poor leadership, where does, you know, where do they, where does one end and one begin? Because a lot of people I know um, just have, have very, very poor leadership skills. Um, and the, the, the difficulty is, is that they don't really know what they're necessarily doing. So, so, mm -hmm. so this is, in, it's interesting, the gray area between the two. So actually the poor leadership is, um, for example, when someone has um, still good intention, you know, behavioral intention, yes. but yes. doesn't necessarily know how to become a good leader. Yeah. But the bullying is like an aggressive behavior. So there is constant and aggressiveness. So it's, an, it's that back to that positive intention to bully. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So here, um, like if someone withholds the information, there is an intention, like right? there is a reason behind it. Yeah. Why should I keep yeah. an information for me if it is meant to be shared? Yeah, yeah. Um, so therefore we can clearly differentiate the bully type of leader versus the uh, leader that has poor leadership skills that can learn because uh, you know people with poor leadership skills they can still learn it if they want to learn it but i think there's also um uh clearly um cultures that become um encourage certain behaviors and um you know there there and also actually there's fashions of leadership styles that have gone on which also so i mean i've known fashions where the stories are quite aggressive about leadership and then mm -hmm. i've seen other eras where it's become much more subtle so i mean i suppose the question too is is um back to this intention about you know, this this guy or, or woman is has a positive intent to bully. Mm. I suppose one of the things to come back to is where does that intention come from? But let, let's come back mm. to that. Um, yeah. so in, intimidating bullying. Yeah. Then, um, so intimidating bullying is actually a verbal aggression, right? Like if I become verbally aggressive towards someone, and shout and show that aggression via, via my verbal communication or finger point like, oh, it was you who did not deliver this. And again, there are people who, you know, you made a mistake, for example, and you are aware that this mistake has happened um, and you apologize yourself for that mistake and you really care and look that this doesn't happen. But then this bully, repeats that mistake again and again in the meetings or comes to you and say, oh, I give you this responsibility. But remember last time you did this mistake. I don't want this to be replicated. And you're like, oh, okay, I know I did it. I apologize myself, you know, or you give a presentation. For example, uh, my manager, that first manager was calling my presentations, play mobile presentations. And he wanted to, every time I was planning to present something, he would want to get, go into a bet with me. I said, I bet that nobody would like your presentation. I was like, why? Do you, do you think at the other end, do you think an intentional bully chooses um, a receiver of the bullying unconsciously or consciously? There are, it, it's actually conscious decision and conscious selection and there are two reasons why either you're an extrovert and you are um, actually uh, you know a threat for the bully because you are you're good in something for example good in networking you're good in presenting good your qualifications are better in some way or the person feels that it's better you know and you're an extrovert and the person is introvert and the person thinks that if they give you the room and space you will shine 
Mm. And for you not to shine, they take a conscious act to move you into another direction. Mm. Or you're an introvert, but you are a very good data scientist, very good technician, a very good engineer. So your qualifications, you, you're, um, you're an introvert and you do your work perfectly fine, but then it can happen that the person selects you consciously to use you as a trash bin, right? So to use, to say, okay, you know what? Um, the person is being bullied. We will look at, at that also at the next slide. The person, the bully itself, himself or herself is bullying, bullied by his or her manager. And they look for someone as a trash bin to empty all these emotions at this person. And since this person is eventually introverted and, and says, look, you know what, I will just listen and I don't care. It's a way of relieving, you know? So this, this is also happening. So, but it doesn't matter if you're an extrovert or introverted, you can become a target. Mm. Anyone can become a target. Very interesting. Yeah. Let's move on to the next slide. Yeah. So the next is like the reason behind bullying. You know, why pe some people become the bullies and why do they bully? You know, when you look at, th there has been a lot of research conducted with kindergarten kids, with students, because bullying is ha ha happening everywhere. And I have two small kids myself. Um, bullying was ongoing at school as well. So the bullying can happen at home, you know. Uh, it can happen in your family. It can happen in your um, environment. So when it starts at the early age, if a, a kid is being bullied early age, the, the, the child can be, turn into a bully later on in her or his um, career. So therefore, it's very important to really also start very young to sensibilize our kids to say, okay, what are the behaviors that we should not show that actually offending other? But in the work environment, let's say we have these people who are the bullies, but the bullies are being bullied themselves as well. So there is a very aggressive company culture or a very aggressive uh, communication style on top. And you as a head of department or head of a team, you are being bullied by your superior. And you cannot cope with it. You cannot regulate it with your emotions or you cannot react. So you take it and you pass it so that's one question about what is pressure and what is bullying because um pressure i've i've, I've most of my career i've worked in high pressure environments mm -hmm. so what's again uh, you know high pressure is your boss with very tight performance metrics around you um what where does where does bullying where does pressure and bullying end Actually, I mean, um, a pressure, I mean, does the pressure needs to come with an aggressive behavior? Well, that's the question about um, a lot of people I know and work with, or um, some people pick up aggressive behavior and can see it. Some people can't even see aggressive behavior. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. haven't got the receptor. Yeah. So I think, um, okay, yes, of course, we work all in very dynamic work environments. There is a lot of pressure and there is a lot of stress and there are different individual uh, mechanisms how to cope with stress. And not everyone is resilient, right? Um, some are better. Uh, they have a stronger resilience level. Some have lower resilience level. Um, but the bullying, as we have looked, seen, is really a systematic way. You know, if it comes from the same person with the intention, and of course, the intention is not always very clear. Like if you say, yes, I, I'm, a, and I'm aggressive because there's a lot of pressure um, and I, I don't want to harm my people. So I can, I can have an aggressive tone, aggressive behavior, 
but once a month we come together with something we do something together as a team or uh, we arrange something uh, you know with the families with the kids to show that I'm really you know caring leader or servant leader but if you if you only have a leader that is like tuk, 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 everything that has to be now everything has to be uh, this way um, but then it is if it's only work related that's still okay but then as soon as it moves into person related okay you know what you haven't done this last time I, uh, and i'm sure you will not you will fail again right or i'm sure you will it not will it will not be successful because this is how you are like this goes into intimidating mm. you can be an, you can be a manager that works under a lot of pressure and expect your team members to cope with that pressure but that doesn't still give you the um, give you know allows you to misbehave towards people to blame them for example if this person would say look i believe in you i know we are in stressful situation i know it's a very dynamic fast paced environment but i believe in you you will make it then you show your positive leadership style right and the person would think you know i know he's a very nasty guy but i need i know the person doesn't have bad intentions Mm. because it's, the, I think it's yeah incredibly subtle but let, let's move let's move on so uh, so bullies um bully others for relief that's like um it's like um how do we could describe that uh, it's um transference we would call that transference in psychology yes and you know and then of course bullies often and this is also um the outcome of a number of occupational research bullies often target talented employees really high performer or people who have very strong social skills mm. because they consider themselves as a as a uh, actually threat as a mm. risk mm. and what do you do best with the risk you try to eliminate it mm. So when we look at the consequences for the individuals and the companies, because there are many more consequences. So from the employee side, if someone feels that the person, I mean, feels, um, you know, bullied, then the first thing what happens, you know, the stress, the anxiety, and with all of that, the motivation decreases. So with the mo decreased motivation the quality of work decreases you start to miss some points in your report uh, you su submit something with a delay um, and then if you cannot stand it any longer you move into ab absentism so it starts with one day then one week then one month six months mm -hmm. and in the end if you cannot cope with it with it, with it any longer you just quit your job and the company loses you know, someone that knows the processes, that, that has all the knowledge, all the information, um, the, the company loses the, the, actually the knowledge. You know, there's a lack of knowledge in the end when the person moves. Um, and of course, during this absence, someone has to continue with the work, right? The business has to continue the work is either being distributed among the team colleagues so the team members are already working at 110 20 percent and they're taking over one or 10 or 20 percent from the colleague this is one option is uh, additional stress for the team members or the company has to find a temporary solution hire someone temporary that on one hand, they're paying the salary of this one person. On top, there's an additional salary, you know, and the social benefits, whatever comes with that temporary position. And of course, when the person leaves the company with all, all that knowledge and information, and they have to hire someone, that comes with onboarding, mm -hmm. you know. And during that sick leave, the company has to cover also all this cost you know, the psychological treatment, the doctor cost, you know, all this um, health related costs. So that comes on top. 
Um, and of course, you know, with that, you know, when, when people leave the companies, they talk. They talk about, oh, this company, don't go to this company because the, the company culture is so bad. This manager, don't work with this manager. He or she is, has such a negative behavior. And then you all see all these feedbacks in Glassdoor, you know, about the company and the company reputation, you know, suffers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on. So... Um, so in the situation, I just want to highlight a little bit the situation in Switzerland. Of course, you know, every country has a labor law. This has, be, has to be followed by every company and every law, you know, labor law clearly describes the, um, the code of conduct that a lot of companies are transferring, transferring it into company policies. And in Switzerland, the, for example, sexual harassment is stated you know, that there should be no sexual harassment and companies have zero policies for sexual harassment, but um, there is no terminology used in the Swiss labor law workplace bully. It's, it says, you know, in order to safeguard the personal uh, safety, health and integrity. So workplace bullying equal to integrity of the employee. So the in integrity of the employee has to be safeguarded. And if not, the government can penalize the companies. And this is also one of the reasons why a lot of companies don't want to talk about workplace bullying, because if they commit that workplace bullying is happening in their companies, then, you know, they eventually would be penalized. However, back in 2017, a survey was conducted in Switzerland by SECO. SECO is the, um, actually the office where they safeguard the employees' uh, health and safety. And according to them, I was in uh, contact with them last week again. Uh, according to them, in Switzerland, back in 2017, 5.1 million employees were working. And out of those 5.1 million, 5 .1 million, every fifth employee was being bullied daily. And um, actually, 51% of them were bullied by their ma managers. And 30 eight percent were suffering from stress so i think it's amazing that's it's, it, these are absolutely incredible figures yes it's amazing uh, and still you know in switzerland we don't want to talk about workplace bullying the terminology workplace bullying is still a taboo topic i think but i, I we're going to get into conversation soon but i think a lot of it is to do with this intent um you know, the, the, it, it, it's because if you have intent, then it, it almost says that this person is a natural aggressor. But let's come to that. Let's carry on on your slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so how can we prevent in this case workplace bullying if this is happening so often and we are still, you know, closing our eyes, closing our ears to it? From an individualistic point of view, what we can do really focus on our resilience, right? To make ourselves strong from inside out. So it, what does it mean resilience? You know, because in the end we are human being and the resilience, the terminology uh, being resilience comes from the steel industry, right? You know, when can a human being break? When would a human break, uh, a human being break how much pressure can you put on a human being until the person breaks right in psychology so um how can we make ourselves resilient there are different coaching methodologies that one can use try to understand also the emotional reactions how do i react emotionally to certain situation how do i perceive different type of behaviors or the communication, what can I tolerate? What can I not tolerate? Because in the end, resilience is like a muscle. You know, if you go to the gym, 
and train our muscles to become stronger, or if we train our immune system with some nutrition. So we should also focus our on, uh, on our resilience level and also to really care about our, on our verbal and non-verbal communication. Because, you know, when I asked at that time to my manager at DIA, how did you think that I was planning to take over your chair? Because he had that intention, right? That I am really, I want to take over his, his role. He said, it was just your appearance the way you communicated, the way you interact with people, the way you have approached with the leadership team members, uh, you know, like the, the, the way I was communicating was kind of for him signalizing that I am planning to take over his seat. And sometimes, you know, we need to be also careful, okay, what do we say? How do we say? How do we transfer that into our, our body language as well? So let's say we have done everything on an individualistic perspective and, but how can companies, because there's still a lot of work that companies have to do, because if I focus on myself, I can protect myself, but I can still be a target. So because the bullies are still everywhere. And I protected myself for three years, but after three years, I moved into victimization and developed negative mental health outcomes. So with some others, it can be after one year, for, with some others, it can be after five years. So there is no fixed time point. So what can companies do? Um, a lot of companies that I have been talking to, mainly in the pharma, they said, you know, we have this diversity inclusion teams. We care about diversity and inclusion. Any harassment type of is forbidden. We have uh, healthy coaches, we have safety coaches. We prepare, you know, we are um, well prepared in case of an accident or we have implemented some, some safety measures. Uh, we are providing some trainings. We have a speaking up culture. We have an unbossing culture. And we really have trained our leaders to become more servant leaders, et cetera, et cetera etc but you know i i am being contacted on a daily basis from all these companies that they are saying we have this in place we have that in place still telling me alem we are being bullied how can we what can we do against it right so what can companies do against it first of all to prevent that this is happening and if it's happening to stop and a lot of companies I know, they say, look, don't touch the word bullying, but rephrase it, say psychological safe work environments. How can we create psychological safe work environments where the employees feel psychologically safe, where they feel trusted, where they feel comfortable, where they really can flourish and you know, be inspirational uh, employees for also for others. So from my, according to my experience and according to my researches, I strongly believe that every company has to have a zero tolerance policy towards workplace bullying. So no workplace bullying from anyone should be tolerated and there should be consequences. And what consequences, of course, that's, you know, that is something that HR has to decide, their companies have to decide. But before even that, there should be a lot of sensibilization campaigns because this is, topic, this is a topic that is a taboo topic. And why is it a taboo topic? Why can we not talk about it? Why can we not share our stories? You know, there could be um, lunch and learn sessions, where people come together, share their experience, and probably some of those experiences where they have classified as bullying are not, is not bullying. And by that, they would really learn what is really bullying. How I does think, it take place? I think, Elam, this is an ideal place to bring in the group um, to start asking you questions, because I think that 
um, we're talking about uh, proactive conversation here. So um, can I ask Maggie to take the slides down and we'll bring the group together and mm -hmm. ask, um, I'm going to 